Mika, are we going to fix the Jeep? Are you conehead? All right, guys. So we're going to fix the tick. The tick that has been driving me nuts. The tick that when I start, if you haven't seen it, you can go watch my video on where I start it. And I know it's on this side right now, but I want to see if it's affecting both sides of the heads. Basically, we have to check the lifters and rockers for any movement. If we do, then we need to replace the rocker and possibly the lifter, which could be fun. So if you're going to attempt this project, first thing you're going to want to do, 10 millimeter ratchet on the ground and loosen it up. Get that thing nice and just a little bit like that. Wiggle it off. Get it out of here. You do not want it touching that end. If you want to, you could take off your power, but I majorly just take the ground. After we do that, next thing you're going to want to do is, well, we can actually leave that one. This is probably, oh, it is a 10. Wow. I was going to guess it was bigger. So we're going to take these two off. And of course, I'm already doing that. Anyways, take those two bolts out. A trade to keep all your bolts in. If you want, you can go back to this video afterwards to see which bolt goes where. Next thing you're going to want is an 8 mil. Loosen this off. You'll get that band clamp nice and loose and you can loosen it with your fingers afterwards. Do whatever you'd like. And then after we've loosened, oh, you know what? That's got to be enough. That's nice and loose, right? As I say, as I kiss it. So after we get there, there's this tube. Loosen it up. Pop this off. See how that's like this? Cool, right? We have this hose right here, which will either pop off of right here. Ooh, that can click in right there. Well, we're going to slide this off anyway. You're just going to do that with brute force. Slide it off. Now see right here, pop, pop, and there should be one more around the back right there. And one more down here if you have it. I should have it. No, it's right there. I didn't break it. Ha ha. And look. You can lift this up and out of the way. Oh, that was dirty. Well, I'm going to put a new air filter on anyway. But see how this is just sitting right here? Now we just need to get this off of our tube. Oh, it's just going to do that multiple times, isn't it? Let's see. Falcon pull. All right. I don't want to go too ham. Anyways, you're going to squeeze this off. Once you get this off, take that whole piece out of the way. That is our long piece. We flipped it up. Take a look. There's a duct tap. Squeeze it, pull it out. Just make sure you squeeze and compress that enough. Once that's like that, take it, move it out of the way. To do this properly, you are going to want to release your throttle body as well. You'll see that right here, it has a safety on it. So you might have to either push it out or pull it in. Usually it's pull out. Let's see. Oh, can I get it? C can I get it? Oh, yeah, I got it, I think. I'm breaking my nail while I'm at it, and everyone's going to be like, Ah, oh, he's got nailed. All right. And then compress and wiggle. You might have to pop out more than that. But basically, you have to slide the red back to a good portion. And then after that, then you would compress it and then slide it out. Now we're gonna get to a part where we have to start pulling things. So literally just grab, pull it. You'll see it's just a sandwich clip. These should just pull right off of here. Oh, and let's see, fucking pull. I always do that and it makes me look stupid. Okay, I'll just do it afterwards. Bet you it's probably off there or whatever. Let's just focus over here. So, right here. Again, duct tab. Pull it out, move it over here. Now, you're gonna see this. This, I'm gonna go get a tool. This tool is cheap, and you should own one. If you don't own one, go get one. Seriously. And then, you literally would just even come in from this angle, and uh, you'll see it just gets in between there, and you can pop it out like that. 
do it like a pro and then you can sandwich it back in afterwards and then this one's on the bracket I don't know if I'm gonna remove the bracket yet maybe I'll just leave it for a sec because the next thing to do is to get in here and loosen this this is attached to the intake manifold right here now you could if you wanted to take your throttle body off I'm not going to unless I see a major reason to do so I just want to get this off and get this intake manifold out of here see this foam cover let's just get it out of the way you'll see there's another Christmas tree popper right here and you just need to pop it out right here see that aha there's one more right there all right come on be difficult well I broke the foam oh well I don't care so now this foam is free work it out and work it around and get it out of the way so we can work around back there a little bit easier why not I'm gonna pull these off because these are never going back on who knows if I even needed to remove these but to tell you the truth um, the engine shroud itself on top keeps in so much heat I took it off and I'm pretty sure every Jeep I've ever seen off the pavement has had them take it off so yeah I'm taking these hooks off you want to know when Jeep is serious? When they put the Newton meters in tightness of these bolts right up here to make sure you don't crack your intake manifold, they literally put it right on the intake manifold. Craziness. Anyways, let's uh, take this out of here. Put that over here. And by the way, Newton meters, if you don't know right now, is a kind of like foot pounds of measurement, but it's not foot pounds. So I don't think it's that much foot pounds. I'm just using a comparison, which might be really bad. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna remove the intake manifold from the top. So when we do so, things to note, if you want, you can give it a quick wipe down so that way you don't get anything dirty when you take it off. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull bolts out that are holding it on right here. And let's just get it out of here. Let's get this intake manifold off. And we'll come over here. Make sure you take it off the brackets right there and right there. And then also right here, which is holding your throttle body. So I'm gonna actually take out these four bolts first right here. I'll tell you what sizes they are. These look like tens. So those four were tens. One, two, three, four. Now that we've gotten all the ones I can see from this side for right now, let's go to that side. Next thing we're gonna do, right here. Let's take this plate off that this panel is resting on. So take out that one, and then take out this one, which is holding my AC line. Take out that one, which is holding my AC line and there's one more just over behind this clip right here so one two three right there and four you'll see it all in that little metal plate where the ecu harness is now that we've got those bolts out of the way we're just going to go ahead and loosen these make sure you feel that pressure so that way you realize just how little eight to nine newton meters really is so you're not sitting there just wrenching on these and then you're like, why did I strip it? Well, the reason why you stripped it is because you didn't do eight to nine Newton meters. Make sure that, because I'm telling you, like I have my smallest ratchet out right now with a stupid long extension for no reason. And you can totally feel there's like barely anything. Like if you went He-Man with this little wrench, you would strip it probably and you wouldn't want to do that so go ahead and make sure you have a torque wrench that goes down to eight to nine newton meters look at that biggies so biggies up top smallies on the bottom see once you've gotten these three out and then those three don't forget there's a sneaky one around the corner 
if you have a wobble extension or a little bit smaller extension than what I've got on there, it'll be perfect. When you go to lift this, pull back a little, and then you gotta guide those bolts out on the other side, but you also have to be mindful of this plate. See that? So you need to lift and work it out. But it's free. It's free to play with. It's gonna be that plate. I'm gonna try and work it out and I'll tell you the method I use. So, you push a little bit here. You'll notice that these two bolts come out, go down there, push, and you have to push it a little bit to the point of where you're biting through your lip and it'll come out. Once those are out, you'll see it's nice and in here, still a little bit, just a little bit. You're gonna carefully pull up on this plate and as you pull up on this plate, make sure this is in here. Jesus, Richard. So once that's there, you can see it's gonna come up. I just don't want, you don't wanna mess around too much with that gasket if you're gonna reuse it. For me, I'm probably gonna replace it, but it just depends if it has any nicks in it. To avoid nicking it, what we're gonna do, like I said, is lift and then try and use your second set of hands that you don't have. That's why I'm gonna put the camera down and you're gonna lift this and then work it out. There is, let's see if I can show you, right there, right where you can't see. So right here on the ECU harness, follow it. You'll feel for a strap, Christmas tree barb, right here. Just a little bit farther back, it's right there. So once you free not one, but two barbs from right here, they're right next to each other, you should be able to just, you know, lift it out. So go ahead and just, you know, lift it out. There's that one last hose. I'll tell you how to remove it after I figure out how to remove it. I don't know at the moment, and it's sitting very nicely right there. There's no strain on it, so I'm gonna just leave it there for a second. I've covered the intake manifold area here. And the next thing we're gonna do is start looking at the heads. As you can see, one's covered with foam. You just have to pick it up at this point. And yeah, I should probably not even show you this because I'm the foam killer. It will die. So, at this point, you can choose A or B for which one you wanna remove. Um, when it comes to releasing these, you might need not an extension. I'm gonna put that in my bucket. You basically need to come over here and you need to just sink this in and pull back. Let's see, oh, just like that. Sink them in, pull back, and then you can release the uh, screw on each of them. And once you release the screw, Give them a good tug. They're gonna be suction fit on there. And when you give it a good tug, take your coils, put them somewhere safe. You don't wanna break an expensive coil. From this point, if you're gonna replace your spark plugs, which if you're at anything over 60,000 kilometers, or I guess 40,000 miles on these plugs, you might as well just because you're already in here and you've got the intake manifold off. But you could just leave your old plugs in there for now and then we'll replace them after. At this point, uh, you'll see another red clip right here. Oh, I clicked it on the first try right there. Click and then compress and take it off. You have one on this side too. And I don't know if that one, no, that one doesn't maybe have a safety. So got that off. Look at that. We're all free. At this point, if you want to, you could well, that's just our oil fill. We could definitely just go ahead now and start taking off all the bolts on the head. You'll see the head right here. And let's just get this one out of the way. Look for anything that's going to stop you amongst the way, but I think if I see anything, I'll let you know. So what I did is I put this in between there, slowly worked it while pulling it and it's to here. And now you'll be able to pull it off or work it out the rest of the way. Just careful, it could just be set in there depending on how many kilometers you have on your motor. Because, you know, heat. And yeah, just gonna do that now and wiggle it back and forth and 
get it off and look at that it's free it's heavy i'm not going to pick it up with one hand there's a third plug right here undo it so one two and wherever that other, oh yeah three so that one's just barely out if you want to you could disconnect this if you're worried about breaking it i'm confident i'm not going to same with this plug right here um but and same with that one look all these plugs injectors um so right here we're going to start loosening this but you'll also see these so again you can try wiggling them free doing it with a flat blade or just using our handy dandy christmas tree papa like i said these things are helpful for everything if you use them the right way because i totally am just like that why do they always come out so ugly probably because i'm ugly no all right so just do that and look at that now these are free from the head now i just taken a look here yeah i'm confident take all the all the bolts and remember to look for different sizes right here grab that big thick wiring harness and pull up on it you'll see it slides off of a bolt head the last one off to the side make sure you get that otherwise you'll be swearing at yourself then if you want you can make a bendy mcthingy thing like this uh, with your 8 mil and don't try to pull out the bolts because these bolts just as you can see they just sit in here you shouldn't have to it, like they should just sit in there if you want to protect yourself from breaking this you can lift there's a little lever right here and turn just like that and now you don't have to worry about breaking your fill neck you'll notice a couple of Christmas tree barbs make sure you pull that one off and pull this one off and then you'll feel one more little one right down here get her out too after that's all done I think we've got them. Yeah, I think that's our Christmas tree barbs. We have movement. So, just make sure everything is loosened up. Like, go around once more to all these bolts. Make sure there is no chance of threads being left in. See? Look at that. Ooh, there's still some left there, see? So, I'm going to go around once more. Make sure they're all loosened up. Just to make just to make your life a little bit easier slide this off as well put it off to the side or throw it at your dog no I'm kidding no throwing it at Mika what are you doing conehead see this little sensor right here you need a t27 slip it in loosen it off as you loosen it off you'll notice a whole lot of tension pop these two bolts out and get this bracket out of the way Loosen the two bolts and put it off to the side. I didn't end up uh, completely removing it. I just loosened it a bit. And look at that. More than enough room to get in there. Next thing to do is to check these rockers. First thing that I'm going to suggest we do is pull out this battery box. I think it's just going to be a heck of a lot easier. To do so, loosen your battery terminal that's left right here and pop it off to the side. Right down there. If you can look past my wiring right here on your battery there'll be another piece right here you're just going to loosen and you can pop this battery out and then we can better see what's in the box take this lift up just try and kind of leave it off to the side wretched this all the way over there and get it so just enough room to get that plate uh, back off the tooth there's a tooth on that side too gripping each side of the battery if you can not pull that all the way out it's better because there's a bolt or a nut in there and if you drop it then you have to fish it out from your fender and then use your hand for me it's easy i can reach in there and grab it because i don't have fender liners but if you have fender liners and it falls in it's a big headache so if this was sunk in here like so you would slip this in there like that no pressure needed and lift out do it on both sides come to this side do the same thing right here slip this in between lift up 
and just basically work it off those two teeth and we'll flip it over. Once we've done that, loosen this screw and loosen these three. After that, pop the one out down here and the one out right here, the two screws that is. Take the air filter out. And if you just grab this and pull on it, the whole bin should just pop right out. Christmas tree popper uh, right here. Uh, come on, there we go. I hate when it free willies and pops right out the top. All right, now we can move that out of the way a little bit, just like that get that last one right here so this box is free once you get to this point literally just go with your christmas tree popper and go popper haven you have poppers here here and here and you're just gonna keep popping all these barbs until all the wires are free out of here i'm gonna see if we can do this without pulling out our fuse box if we can just leave it off to the side i have a feeling we might be able to we're just gonna have to like i said pop out all these christmas tree poppers you won't have all these extra wires. I have these because I have rock lights. I might just quickly disconnect them, but I want to show you what I did. First, loosen your power steering so you can move it around to get this top piece out. Then move those so they're not locked in. Once you do that, as you can see, I have this just sitting here right on the side. If this is going to bug you, put a cloth or something underneath it. And of course, do the same with your fenders if you're worried about scratching up your fenders because you have one of them fancy dancy Saharas with the painted fenders. I don't. I have aftermarket. I don't care about them. They're going to get scratched in the bush. So once you do that and you get to this point, then once I get up over here, I'll squeeze this back down, put the nub in over here and pop the case out. And as long as you've released every one of those barbs, this will be fine. If you haven't released all those barbs, then it'll get caught up and it'll let you know and you'll have to release that one. Once we get this out of here though, it's going to be so much easier. And we aren't going to, I'm not going to disconnect my fuse box. If you want to, take a picture of the bottom and you can release those levers and take your fuse box right out of the way. Leave that up to you. Don't want to tell you what to do because if somebody hooks it up wrong, I don't want them blowing up their car and blaming me. Extra 20 minutes, but well worth it. Look how our access has been gained. We can now gain access to everything. Again, if you'd like to at this point, and you do want to just get this out of the way, it's so much easier now. You would just go ahead, take a couple pictures of the connectors, and then release the rockers. You'll see they have safety reds on there. So you slide the safety red up, and then you slide that lever up, and then it'll release. As it's releasing, it pulls the connector out. Again, only do it if you feel safe to do so. I think anyone can do it. But the problem is, is every time I think anyone can do everything, it doesn't work out that way. You'll see this metal plate and you'll see that the rocker, or not rocker, but yeah, the rocker cover, head, whatever you want to call it, release all those eight mils again, all the way around. And then that cover should be part of the eight mil kit and it should come right off. You might want to just lift it and slide it over or just pop this off just like you did from inside the box. And you can put that connector off to the side and get that plate right out of there. Um, with your AC lines, you can see they're flexible. Just flex them up and out of the way for that plate. So take all those eight mils off. But also before you do that, let's quickly pop these coils again. So just like you're used to, I've already popped these off when I did the other ones. Or actually, I didn't. I still have two right here. So I'm going to release those two connectors. And then I'm going to pop out these 10 mils again and then pop our coils up. I just popped the sensor out on the other side now. Um, just make sure you know which one's which. Yeah, it's got 15099. But if you look at the E number, E1511 is for this side. And if you look at the top of the other one, E501 is for the one under the intake manifold. Something to pay attention to. Just like the other side, there's a tube. It's down there though. It's weaved all be between the uh, dipstick for your tranny. And you're just got to pull up on it as hard as you can and she'll pop off the nub. After you do that, if you feel around that nub, next, if you feel behind where you just pop that off of, 
off that nub, you're gonna feel a Torx. And again, there's no way anyone's gonna be able to show you what this Torx looks like, but feel for that hole where you just pop the pipe off of and you will feel the Torx. So now you have to take a Torx bit. Um, try your 27, it might be a 25. And then loosen her up. And after you loosen that, just feel around it. And what you're gonna have to do is, let's get that first one out first. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is so we can rotate this we're going to want to rotate it to the lobes you're sitting right on the rocker itself. Um, see how this lobe aims up but it's currently sitting on top it's putting no pressure on the rocker. Well we want to rotate these so that way there's pressure on the rocker. Thing is if you have the spark plugs in it makes it really tough to do so. So what I would suggest we do is we go down pull out all the spark plugs. What you're going to need is a 5.8 spark plug socket. That way it's got the grippy cushion to pull it out. And pull out all six spark plugs out of the tubes. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is a spark plug socket. Usually you can tell because it has this rubber, or sorry, this shape on the back here. And if you look inside the socket, you see a black rubber ring. And that cresses the ceramic area on the tip. So that way when it goes in, it grips it, and then you can pull it out properly. If yours and you don't have a spark plug socket and you're in a jam, you can always take the plug out and then after you've unscrewed it, if you can't get it out of the cylinder, you use a magnet stick and you put the magnet on the tip of the spark plug and slide it up carefully. I do suggest if you're already this far in and you haven't changed your spark plugs in 40,000 kilometers, once again, change them. All right, so you might have to move the lobes around which of these, once you pull the plugs out, you can just put a wrench on here and turn it and it'll turn, of course, the timing chain and everything. And you can check them. So make sure you do both sides at once. But if I'm going up and down with this, this isn't that bad, right? There might be a tiny bit of play, which is normal. If the lobe is down, don't expect any play. And that's actually why you want to rotate it so you can figure out which ones have it. Like this one's still fine, this one's still fine. I didn't have any noise out of this side, so I wasn't too worried. But that being said, I want to show you what it's like when you do find the problem. So that way you're not just changing. So a lot of them, if you grab them and you wiggle them, you'll get some noise like that, but you're just wiggling it back and forth. That's not doing anything. Try up and down. Feel the up and down movement, and again, watch your lobes. But see, no noise, but if I do side to side, I got noise. I'm gonna show you the culprit. Listen to this. Not so bad, but this one, I'm gonna do it with one finger. Hear that? I'm just tapping it. I'm not even hitting it, and the lobe is kinda half down on this one. Let's see if I can get a better shake. The problem is, is it's the absolute last one. But, let's see, oh, hear that? I'm shaking it like this, like just to show you with this finger, look how much pressure I'm using. Almost none here on all of these and see how there's no shaking, no movement? Watch this. That's just the tip of my finger. So that is my dead one. So the way to change this is we're going to have to be very careful because we don't want to change any of the timing on your timing chain. So I'm going to grab my Torx and I'm going to loosen off all of these. And then what's going to happen is after you've loosened them, don't take them all the way up, just loosen them out quite a bit, and you should be able to move this up a little bit and slide the rocker out. And then we'll slide the new rocker in. All you're gonna do is, I'm not gonna pop this one off, but lift it a little bit and slide it down. It'll probably drop in 
right here into the metal and then you have to work it out. But literally, it does not take much force. You just can lift a little bit, even if it'll move at all, and then you can slip that right out. So, I slipped out my bad one. Check out how bad this thing is. So, I'm gonna see if I can get a better hold on it. Here, let's just do this. Um, see, let's see, I want it to focus. Focus, there we go. See how it's flush right there? Watch this. See how much it sticks out? Shakes like a maraca, right? You can see it moves up and down. If I could only do it with my, oh there, see? Okay, let's show you the new one. So, the new one, which is right here, 17 bucks at Dodge. You can get it cheaper from other places. Look, no movement. You can still shake it, but no real movement. And you can try and put your finger up and it doesn't move. So, so far, that seems like it's the only one that's gone bad on me. I lucked out. I know many of people that have had three to four go at a time. I'm only gonna do the one for now. And after I put this new one in, um, the other thing I've got is I've picked up some passageway cleaner, which, it, We'll go in afterwards, run it through the engine, let it do its thing at idle, and then after we do that, then I'll be doing an oil change as well. I also bought new spark plugs. Just to show you how easy this is, well that one, that lobes down, but look at this. So I'm lifting it out, and then it just slides back on. You'll feel it, the ball goes back into the ball spot, and then the other piece fits just on top, the valve there, and then that's it. Now that we've got that in and set, let's torque the, let's, well, before you torque them down, uh, cinch these all back down. Don't put any real torque on them yet. Just cinch them down. This is a T30 by the way. So now that we've cinched all those down, I've given them a little bit of torque, but not a lot. We're gonna go grab our torque wrench. Grabbed out the handy again torque wrench. 84 inch pounds. So this is our old plug. As you can see, they aren't that bad. Focusing, maybe. Let's give it a black background. Right there. Looks all right. Let's show you a new one. As you can see, way more tip to it. If we were to compare the two next to each other, which will probably be next to impossible. Just because of focusing. Let's see. See the two tips there? You can see the silver one has way longer new thread to it. So, we're gonna go ahead and put that in. If you want to, you can put anti-seize, although a lot will tell you not to. I would suggest if you're going to put anything on these threads, I would put uh, dielectric grease. Put that on the threads if you're really worried about them getting uh, seized in there. Don't use anti-seize in my personal opinion, but if you want to, you can go ahead. Again, personal preference. Load it in the socket. If you can flip it upside down and let go of it like a blizzard from DQ, you should be ready to go. So. Throw that on your extension, slide them in, and tighten all six of them in. The trick I like to do is tape the socket to the extension. Now the reason why is, otherwise you might put it in there, and that grip is just holding too good, and all of a sudden you'll go to pop her out, and uh, well, she's just not gonna wanna let go. Once you have it in there, and you have your plug aligned, I suggest back turn, and then start tightening. What this allows to do is the threads to try and backspin against the other ones and it sometimes lines it up better. Last thing you want to do is strip. So if you feel it getting caught at all, be mindful and do not go he-man. If you do and you strip this, crying is not an option. Got your torque wrench. Put her in. Again, handle. And basically just go until she clicks. It's 13 foot-pounds or 144 inch-pounds. 
Now that we've done that, what we're going to go ahead and do is go around the rim of this and clean everything off. Push away from the engine. Use some cloths if you want. Put some, uh, you can do some combustion chamber cleaner. But basically, use it and clean this up because you want to make sure that gasket is going to clean up and sit nicely. You can see the gasket line on here. And then what we're going to do is you can either A, go and get new gaskets for your intake manifold and for your rockers or you can go ahead and um, use a little bit of silicone that's what a lot of people do so they'll just put a little bit of silicone on the gasket and then sink it down again you don't have to and i'm not telling you to blob silicone on there i'm telling you to go around and rub your hand finger along the gasket with a little bit of silicone after you clean it and that can help it cling and seal a little bit better. If you do that method, make sure you silicone it on both sides. When you go to replace the gasket ever, it's a little bit trouble some to do so afterwards, but if you're in a pinch and you don't have gaskets, it's a way to make sure it seals. Pop in that, just squeeze it through that uh, rubber gasket, wiggle it if you must. Once it goes down, tighten that screw in slowly. Once it seats in the gasket, torque it down to 80 inch pounds. Plug it in, make sure you log your red tab back in there like so, so that way it's locked in. Pop these barbs back in. Go down here if you want, pop these barbs back in. From there, you can drop your coils in. Just slip them in, click, click, click. Tighten these down to 70 inch pounds. So this is all done to 70, 71, whatever you want to do on those three. Those are plugged in. Uh, that sensor in the back is plugged in. Let's take our fill neck, make sure it's clean, which ours is. And then there will be a groove right there. See this groove? And there's a groove there, I believe. Or just, just wiggle it until it goes and then tighten it and it locks in. Look, can't move it, perfect. Now that that's in, next thing we want to do is take the next two sensors, if you want, these two that are, are they here, right there. But well, let's uh, go ahead and grab these. We have two of them right here. You see, one is shorter than the other. Make sure you plug them in right. This one will come over like so and that one right here boom so that one's in this one's in from this point you can take this plate that we took off we could put that back on now too. Those two bolts are right there. And then these two, of course, go into our intake once that's ready. The other thing you can quickly throw on is that hose that was back here. Have that hose come back up and rub it through. And then take one last once over and just make sure you have all your barbs plugged in. And yeah, right now I can see all my connections and my connections look good. I'll go over them one last time, but like I said, get that vacuum line up and over here, and that should be it. This side, do the exact same thing. Just button it all up, just like you did the other side. Put all your clips in, put all your bolts in. The only thing that's a little different is that PCV valve on the uh, end. Uh, when you go to put it down, you have to lift the top, back the bottom in a little bit on an angle like this, and then it We'll work into the nub and on the back of the case. That last T25 one, as we know, the back PCV valve is absolutely fun. So what I did is I made a contraption. Um, this came with my kit. It's so you could hook up a ratchet to a bit. As you can see, I put the bit in there and then the ratchet wasn't big enough. So I have ratcheting box wrenches and I put it through like this so I could hold it to slide it on and then I could ratchet it with this really close to the engine body. And that's the only way I was able to get in there to do both of them. 
Uh, torque spec is 30. Good luck getting a torque wrench in there. If you get it in there, kudos to you. But in the end, I could not, so I just did this. Now that this is in and this is done, I think what I'm gonna do next is put that plate in. And I haven't put the intake manifold in. It's just sitting there because I'm just seeing where those tubes are gonna have to run from the PCV valve and the other back end of the plastic and then run those two tubes out to the front so we can plug them back into our intake manifold when we're done. Once we know those routing, we could suck in our intake manifold and then focus on this battery box. Once you've got your tubes going like so, just make sure they're both sucked in and they're running along the center right here. After those are sitting there, we're gonna put the intake manifold on. You can put this piece of foam back in here if you want, just as a spacer in between the two. And then after we have the manifold on, we'll tighten up our mount right here and we'll tighten up the manifold. Once that's done, this side is completely done and we just have to focus on that side. Remember tall bolts in the top, small bolts in the bottom. What I did is I started over here, tight, tighten to 84 inch pounds, then 84 inch pounds, 84 inch pounds, and then came back over here, 84, so it went, sorry, went here, there, 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 back over here, down here, to here, to here. Let's go over there. First thing you're gonna check is make sure that plate's nice and tight, top and bottom. After that, you have another plate right here. Make sure this one gets tightened top and bottom. Plug it in. You should only have one connector free on this side, and that's this little one. So go over all of them, make sure all your connectors are in, and that's it. Once you know that this one is the only one, come over here and run your tubes like so. One's into there, one's sitting here. This is the tricky one. This one that go this little one, see how it's weaved through here? Just make sure it's there. Um, your plate, tighten your plate down. Again, put this on and barb that, and then I just slid in the battery tray. And this is the fun part where you just basically have to navigate your wiring. The only one that goes on this side is make sure this little canister right here, there's that little wire. Make sure it's dangling over here when you slide it in so that way you wrap it and plug it. And that's about it. I'm gonna just uh, put the intake back in now, put the battery in, and I'm gonna give it a start test. Make sure you line up this corner right here with this. Otherwise, if you put it over here, it'll overlap and won't seal properly. I'm getting a new air filter tomorrow. I totally forgot to grab one today. Whatever. Just want it so I can start this up and test it out. So put it there, throw your intake back in. Oh, when you put this in, just line up those three and remember to squeeze it down. Take a look. Make sure bolted, bolted, tightened, tightened. Still connected, it should be connected anyway. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Um, and just double check all your connections. All your vacuum lines are hooked up, otherwise it'll throw a vacuum code. Other than that, everything looks plugged into me. I'm going to go ahead and... <laughs> this is why you double check, double check, double check. So, after we've got all that, let's go start it. Hey Mika, we're gonna start it. Scary times. Just that little rocker, that's all it was. The little bloody rocker that I put down somewhere. And you know what? I've been so much hate with it, I don't care if I see it again. By now it would have been thud, 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 thud. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching. Hope it helps you out.